Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about a very old yet somewhat useful synthetic procedure which we call Gabriel synthesis, which is the method of the primary amine synthesis. The general scheme of the reaction is fairly simple. We are going to start with the primary alkyl halide and we are going to treat it with the phthalamide, which going to give us this monstrosity, then we are going to take this intermediate and we are going to do the cleavage of that really releasing our primary amine. As simple as that. Now, there are a few things that we do need to discuss when it comes to the mechanism and the overall reaction here. First of all, let's talk about the potassium phthalamate itself. The molecule is synthesized from phthalamide by treating it with potassium hydride, which is a very powerful base, so it is going to come in and deprotonate this position over here, giving us the corresponding product where the potassium is going to be our counter ion, which we don't really care about and H2 evolves as a gas. However, we don't need to go to extremes such as potassium hydride, which is a very powerful base, and you have to be very careful working with that compound. The PKA of thalamide itself is about 8, which means that it can be quite easily deprotonated with something as simple as potassium hydroxide without any problems. Within the scope of your class, you could see either way and both of those are perfectly fine. So the core of this synthesis is going to be an SN2 reaction between our primary alkyl halide and our potassium phthalamide, which is a very bulky nucleophile. And because of how bulky it is, the reaction is pretty much limited to primary alkyl halides. If you try to do it with a secondary alkyl halide, most likely you are going to fail. So the way it works here, like we would expect for any other SN2 reaction, the nitrogen comes in and displaces the leaving group, which is the bromine in my case over here, giving us the corresponding molecule. And on this intermediate, I have highlighted the new bond that I have just created between carbon and nitrogen. And so now, when we have this intermediate, we are going to continue to cleave the phthalamate portion, uh, and the most common cleaving agent here is going to be hydrazine. So we're going to take our phthalamate, and the first step here here is going to be the reaction between our hydrazine and one of our carbonyls. So nitrogen comes in and kicks the electron up. And that happens relatively easily because the nitrogen in the hydrazine molecule is a very strong nucleophile, so it will react even with the unreactive electrophile such as an amide. As a result of this step here, we are going to get this intermediate and following the normal steps for the acyl substitution, we are going to do a bunch of proton transfers, leaving group dissociation, eventually opening up our molecule, so in a nutshell, I am essentially breaking the carbon-nitrogen bond over here, and I am getting the following intermediate. Now, from this point, we are going to continue this reaction, and that is going to be an intramolecular interaction where the other side of my hydrazine going to come in here and attack my other carbonyl, and then again, following the normal steps for the acyl substitution, we are going to end up with our target amine and the following molecule, which technically is called hydrazide, so it's a phthalic hydrazide. And the benefit of this method with the hydrazine is that our hydrazide product here is going to be a solid precipitate, so in theory it might be easier to get rid of that molecule. In practice, things are a little bit more difficult than that, and actually in reality if you try to do this reaction, you will have a hard time getting rid of these co-products. But who cares about that? We're doing things on paper here, right? Now, the alternative cleavage method that you are going to see in your class is going to involve potassium hydroxide. So that one is actually going to be just a uh, basic hydrolysis of our imid, which as a result going to get the potassium salt of the phthalic acid, which is water soluble, so it might be a little bit easier to get rid of that thing. However, the cleavage with potassium hydroxide actually requires quite harsh conditions and often yields very poor yields and a lot of side reactions. 
overall, the Gabriel synthesis is kind of a bad synthetic method and it does tend to give bad yields and the reaction is incredibly moody and kind of a pain in the neck to deal with. While this reaction is historically important and can be useful in very select cases, we generally don't use it nowadays and mostly use the reductive amination, and I also have a tutorial on that, which is the premier way of making amines nowadays. Nonetheless, the Gabriel synthesis is a fairly common reaction that is tested within the scope of the introductory organic chemistry, so you do need to know how this synthetic procedure works and how to deal with that. So if you have any questions about this procedure, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time!